Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Bare Bones. Sunday morning, having my coffee. I want to talk to you about Claymores. And it's, I know it's been a while since they've been released and other people have put out reviews. But uh, I wanted to actually do a little bit more than just a review. I wanted to talk about a few things. And uh, I wanted to talk about tactics too. Because when this unit was announced and came out, and I'm like, okay, this is a sword unit. This is up my alley. Because if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that infantry charge sword units I do very well with. So for that reason, I was really into getting this done. Now, then when they come out and they were an amazing unit and they're an amazing unit for about 15 seconds and then they're not so much amazing anymore. But I needed this this unit. I like I liked how it played, you know, it's quick and then how it played. So I needed to figure out a way to use the unit more than once in a fight because when you're paying what is going to be 245 leadership points for it when the season ends, you want to get at least one or two charge, more than one, sorry, more than one charge out of it. So, so you had, I had to come up with like new tactics to do it, but we'll get into that later. But first let's take a look at uh, our timestamps and, uh, I'm going to talk about power creep and itemization and, uh, this is because, as you know, as the game progresses, you got to put new and new units in. And so I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about my win-loss. I'm going to show you what my win-loss with this unit is, my kill-death with it, and I'm going to talk briefly about tactics. And then I'm going to get into its doctrines. And then I'm going to go over the data card, which is everything that you see in that little, little well, the data card. Vet line bonuses, which is everything that's in the vet line. Attributes and abilities. And then I'm going to give you some gameplay examples. So let's talk about the first thing I want to talk about, which is power creep. Um, <clears throat> power, power creep is, is I'm sure most of you know what it is, but I'll just give my little what I think it is. And uh, right now we have a game that's in its 10th season. And it the the, the financial model, the, the payment model, relies on not just um, convincing you to buy a subscription, but also convincing you to... Uh, slap down money for a battle pass, so like two subscriptions. And then, of course, you can pay to shortcut your way through the new units that are released. So you're looking at all this, and um, you're on 10 seasons, and you release an average of three units a season. And they have to be good and good, otherwise you're not going to slap that money down to unlock those more difficult challenges. And... Uh, so you have to make it good enough that you're going to pay for it. So what happens is, is that the units get super good. And then the previous units, of course, not so good. Nobody really uses some of the previous units again. Now, granted, they went back to the Keshigs and the Iron Reapers, and they've adjusted them, and the Palace Guard, and they adjusted those too to make them more in line. But for the most part, the newer units have that power creep that's better than the old units. But there's a problem, right? Um, most games go by some something called itemization, or they, they have some metric by which they decide how powerful a unit's got going to be versus how much it costs, right? So as an example, you could say, uh, you know, okay, if you have 10,000 health, that's worth, you know, 200 itemization points, right? And 200 itemization points cost five leadership points. So that, that kind of thing, right? So eventually you hit, you know, I want to make these units incredibly badass, but I can't because I've run out of itemization points. So what do they do? Well, they they say, well, what if I put a big weakness in the unit? You know, that'll subtract itemization points. And you can see this with, like, the Paladins and the Stalwarts, right? You hit them in the back, suddenly you're doing way more damage, right? That's a detractor. That's a negative. So it reduces the itemization points so they can make it better in, in, in some other way. And again, I'm just hypothesizing here. So when you look at, at Claymores, right, you know, up the top line, you get a plus 55% bonus to damage just to your normal swing, plus they move as fast as a slower cavalry unit. You know, that's pretty big, right? All for 245 ultimately leadership points. So what do they do? They put this massive detractor on it, right? So for 15 seconds, you're amazing. And then for the next 10 seconds, you're not so amazing. So that that's the power creep. So I imagine like the Axe Raiders, there's probably gonna be some kind of nerf with the Claymores. Because you can you can you can literally just wreck something for, for 15 seconds. So with that being said though, when you wreck something for 15 seconds and then for the next 10 seconds you're walking super slow, 
you take an amazing amount of damage, you know, you're going to get wiped out. Like a player's going to see that and they're going to hit you with everything they got. So the traditional tactics of, you know, going around at the flank and hitting from the rear maybe might not be so good. You've already seen this a little bit with paladins. Because if you hit someone from the back in paladins, odds are you're already facing the other team's um, start point. So your back's to them, right? So when they hit you in the back, you take a lot more damage. So with paladins, you only want to hit a unit in the back if you can get away with it, right? If you know, uh, otherwise you hit with the side because you do more damage with the side and the rear, or you hit them when they're engaging someone, you know. Uh, so I mean, obviously, if you get a, a, a rear attack, you want to take it, uh, but you want also want to be sure that as you're taking that rear attack, you're not attacked in the rear yourself. So that became a consideration with paladins. It wasn't so much a consideration with men at arms because men at arms, of course, don't have that. Uh, you know, weakness for getting hit in the rear. So what do you do with claymores? Or even worse, not only if you hit someone in the rear, I mean, you get an amazing amount of damage, uh, but not only if you hit them in the rear, are you kind of hanging yourself out there because, of course, odds are you came around the, the side and came into the back. So what that means that anybody spawning in the, in, in the enemy's camp can hit you in the rear. But when you're done your, your amazing attack, you you know, you're vulnerable for 10 seconds while you slowly walk off the field, you know. So you sort of have to pick those rear attacks very, very, very carefully. You know, like maybe you'll get lucky and you'll you'll hit someone in the rear who's hitting one of your units in the rear, so the, your rear is toward, you know, friendly zone. But that becomes a consideration more so with Claymores than, than even Paladins. So now I'm looking at what kind of tactics do you use? when you're, uh, you know, using this kind of unit with that big of a hole in the back. And one of the things I found, and this is a principle, is if you're going to launch your attack, you don't always have to use your cry for freedom, right? Like if you're hitting like a weaker, like a much weaker unit, like archers or something, just go in, you know, put your unit on top of them, hit Claymore Strike, kill the unit, pull back, you have plenty of time, right? Um, but you do want to use your Claymore Strike, so how do you use that? Well. You have to charge through a friendly unit. You have to always make sure that when you hit the enemy, you pop Claymore, you strike, you've popped your Cry for Freedom, you're in your 15 seconds of awesomeness, that your retreat is open so that if you look behind you, you'll see like Palace Guards coming up or something like that. So, and then of course, you don't stay in the fight the whole 15 seconds. So instead of a 15 seconds of awesomeness, you get 11 you know, or 12. So when you're in the fight, you you use the last couple seconds of your amazing quickness speed because you're going at 7.9 if you're at the top line to turn around and run them back through your lines. And then when they start walking, they're walking inside friendly units, right? And so for the next like 10 seconds, you're vulnerable. Now you can't use Cry for Freedom again because the cooldown on that is a minute. But you can turn around and charge back in if you like, or you can just go heal them or whatever. So you always have to make sure you have a line of retreat. And it's and it's not so necessary to, to hit units in the back, I found, or hit units in the side, because of the amazing amount of damage that they do when you are hitting them, right? So you can literally charge into the front of uh, an enemy unit, right? Obviously, if you get a clean side shot, take it, or a clean rear shot, take it. Uh, but if you're in a battle where, you know, it's there there's no real way to get around to the flank or side they actually do quite well in a frontal charge um naturally not so well in a frontal charge against a wall but if you knock the wall down then they do just fine uh but they will do really well in a frontal charge even against like you know palace guards crouched right like they'll they'll do just fine for about you know 15 seconds uh so let's take a look at my um my kill death now so this is my kill death, and uh, you can see I have a win rate of 58%. Now this includes, with in those 65 battles that I've used Claymore, that uh, you know I'm learning and I'm leveling, right? So there is that taken into account too. But even with that consideration, you'll notice I have a 3.3 to 1 kill death. Now I think that's okay. I think that's pretty good. Uh, also, this is you'll notice it says Wild Swordsman. Uh, that's Wild Swordsman is a title for the bottom line. I did not do this with the bottom line. I did this with the top line. What I did is I uh, I took the screenshot 
after I switched my line over. Um, so all these battles are in the top line that are here. And then I switched the line over. I thought, oh, I should probably get a screenshot of my my wind death rate so I can compare the two, you know, with the top line and the bottom line. So this is top line only. These 65 fights are with the top line only. So um, in those 65 fights, the Claymores were MVP 33 to, you know, almost 50% of the time, right? And their average kill death rate, you know, average kills were 49. So in the unit, they're doing two to one, like average, they're doing two to one in, in the fight. And of course, their overall is 3.3, .3, so three to one, which is pretty good. I mean, if you're getting a two to one kill ratio on your unit, you know, and, and now, yes, that includes, you know, serfs and, and, and gold units too, but they'll kill a gold unit just fine uh, when you have that 15 seconds of awesomeness. So I wanted to point that out too, is that they're a useful unit to use if you can keep them alive. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at the doctrines. So breakthrough doctrine, that's really a go-to for me because uh, you know who doesn't want more damage to all units you can get at. Put the rare life doctrine on there. Uh, I did that because uh, I don't have a better slashing pen doctrine. Like it's just green, and I thought ah, three hundred health. But if I could ever get a hold of another blue or um, epic slashing pen doctrine, I'll throw that on there. Um, so that's like a placeholder for now. Then of course, Highlanders increase Kramor strike damage by 5%. That's a must have. And reduce cooldown of Highland charge and for freedom by two seconds. I could live without that if I could get something better, like, like a really nice, uh, high end slashing damage or a really nice, uh, charge damage doctrine. So I could live without the two seconds, but it's, it's good for now. Um, so let's take a look at let's take a look at the uh, the veterancy lines in the the data card here. Uh, so the top line is called Swift Swordsman, and obviously that it's data card. Now I'm going to take the top line and the bottom line, and I'm going to pair them in a separate slide. And uh, I'm going to have the data card slide first, and then I'm going to have the traits and abilities slide. Now the data card obviously includes everything that is automatically put into the into this little card on the right uh and then of course my traits and ability slide will include everything that is not put into everything on the right so let's take a look at, at the uh, data card so now as you can see there's uh claymore's top line and bottom line and you can notice that the health of the claymore's top line is thirteen thousand six hundred and fifteen, and the bottom line is fourteen thousand three hundred forty eight compared to the paladins they get like 11,455. So right away, the Claymores have more health, but they don't have block. Remember, they don't have the the shield, so they don't have that. There's only 20 Claymores versus 28 Paladins. Um, now, the speed is pretty quick. Um, if you look at the base speed, it's 6.1 for the uh, Claymores running around top line and 5.5 for the bottom line which is roughly equivalent to the paladin remember like my i usually say like the paladin speed is the bare minimum speed for a good fast uh you know foot cavalry unit right so even the the claymores what really amounts to their defensive line the bottom line is quick now then you get start going down to the other things slashing armor penetration 1648 versus 1512 uh they don't have any blunt or piercing damage and they have you know the top line 1627 the bottom line 1425 and then you get into their defenses and and you can see that the, the, the paladins obviously have much higher defensive so really when you're looking at it a paladin is kind of like a charge defensive unit because its ability is that heal and the claim orange is a charge offensive unit right um so and if you look at the damage right the, you know the piercing damage that the paladins give is like 1407 compared to the slashing damage of the claymores which is you know 1600 so you can almost say that the damage is comparable right you know like sure the, the claymores do an extra you know the top line does an extra like 120 damage and the bottom line is roughly par uh but that's not all of it right because now you have to factor in the cry for freedom and the top, top line additional damage bonuses that you get that the claymores get for that amazing 15 seconds 
So let's take a look at the traits and abilities, and then we're going to do some calculations. Okay, so here we are in the vet line bonuses. So these are all the bonuses that are in the veterancy lines that don't show up in the data card, right? So these are all situational things or, or whatever. So you can see in the, the, the bottom line, it's more defensively orientated, right? You got your minus 15% damage from range, so you're not going to get hurt as much from archers. You get your minus 15% damage while charging. Uh, you do get a small offensive one, the two-second reduction in Claymore Strike cooldown. Uh, you get a minus two-second reduction in Highland Charge cooldown. Uh, you get another minus 9% damage taken while Felis Heart is active. So it's all pretty good, like damage reduction stuff. Uh, and then, of course, you get plus 2,000 health while Full Freedom is active. This is in addition to the 2,000 you already get, right? So that's like four. And you switch over the top line, and you're getting 10% uh, resistance to range damage, vice 15. You get a nine-second reduction in Highland Charge cooldown, and 10% uh, movement speed increase, and a plus 10% damage to Claymore Strike. This is, of course, in addition to the 5% from your Doctrine. So you get 15%. And then you get a 50% damage during Four Freedom. So you can tack that on to the 40% you already get. So you get 55% when Four Freedom is going. And then when you add the 15% uh, damage from Claymore Strike, you're actually putting out pretty decent damage. So let's take a look at the traits and abilities and do a few calculations. Now, obviously, the traits and abilities are what's in the green there on the right, and of course, your three um, unit abilities. Uh, so let's bring that slide up and do some calculations. Okay, so here are all those abilities and traits, minus the fluff ones, uh, in that card. So you have your three abilities. You have Highland Charge, you have Four Freedom, and you have Claymore Strike. And then, of course, the, the two uh, attributes of what happens during and after, right? So first thing is Highland Charge. The unit charges as directed, inflicting damage in enemies along the way. With four freedom, the charge inflicts greater damage to blocking. After the charge ends, the unit gains the Fearless Heart effect. So you charge, and uh, if you have four freedom running at the same time, you get a greater damage to blocking. So maybe you pop four freedom, charge, and uh, you, know, you can knock a shield wall down. <clears throat> I don't use that. And the reason I don't use that is because as soon as you pop for freedom, your 15 seconds starts, right? Also, you get uh, the Fearless Heart effect after four freedom as well. So let's look at Freedom Heart, which is um, uh, the, the white just below for freedom. When the unit uses Highland Charge or Claymore Strike, it will get a Fearless Heart effect for five seconds. It will ignore an extra 10% damage every time it attacks. It will restore 150 health for itself and nearby allies, stackable up to five times. Also reduces melee damage taken by 20% for two seconds for itself and nearby allies. This effect will become stronger when using four freedom, restoring 300 points of health and reducing melee damage taken by 35%. So if you have Highland Charge and four freedom running at the same time, uh, you're, you lose 5% of this, or five seconds of this, if you think about it. So you Highland Charge in, you get the Fearless Heart. Right? It's not the best one, but you get some of it. Uh, once you hit and you take your unit and you make sure that they're they're deep in the other unit, right? Because you want them deep in the other unit. You hit for freedom, right? And so that activates uh, movement speed is increased by 30%, damage is strength by 40%, and maximum health is increased by 2,000, right? And with the bottom line, you get another 2,000, so 4,000. After the skill ends, however, the claimers will be exhausted and the movement speed will fall by 50%, damage dealt will fall by 40%, and damage taken will increase by 40% in 10 seconds. So if you pop four freedom and then charge, there's that one second or two seconds uh, while they're in the charge and while you're hitting the buttons that you lose that. And on top of, on top of that, uh, instead of getting 10 seconds of Fearless Heart, you're getting five, right? Because you pop them at the same time. So what I do is I charge, I make sure I'm intermixed, I pop for freedom, and then I use Claymore Strike. And that gives me 10 seconds of Fearless Heart, right? So you'll find that the Claymore Strike can kill heroes very quickly, right? Even high armor heroes, right? So I also use this to assassinate heroes, right? Because you, when you surround the hero and you hit Claymore Strike, they'll all turn because he's the closest thing to them and execute them just like that, dead, right? So you have 15 seconds of amazingness and then you got to get out. So again, Highland Charge, Four Freedom, 
Claymore strike. And then at that point, you should be thinking about leaving, right? So you turn around and you send the guys back. And so the last two seconds of for freedom, they're they're using that what becomes 7.95 uh, movement speed rating to get back, right? I'm going to show you show you this in in my videos. So let's take a look at the next slide. Okay, so this slide shows what's going on during for freedom. The calculation that isn't here is, of course, Claymore Strike, because they actually don't give you a base damage number in Claymore Strike. You know that it's at least higher than, than what's here, right? Because this is the damage of For Freedom in your normal swing, right? So we don't know what Claymore Strike is, but it's higher than that, and it's 15% higher than what it, its baseline is in the top line. Uh, so as you can see right now, your base swing is 25-21 in the top line. Your speed goes up by 30%, so 7.93. That is as fast as a slow cavalry unit, right? So literally, if you use the last two seconds of uh, for freedom to get your unit back far enough that they're inside a friendly unit, you can you can save them, right? Now, the bottom line, of course, the, the damage is much, much less. And the speed still gets pretty quick, like 7.15, 7.93. Uh, that's the speed rating on the data card. That's still pretty decent. You can still get them back health there's a big bonus you get like eighteen thousand, and you can really see the difference like when you pop for freedom and let's say your unit's like pretty damaged you can really see the, the the unit jump up in health right but i've only played like maybe four or five uh matches using the bottom line uh using the tactics i developed with the top line and uh it doesn't work so i would hypothesize that uh when you have a unit with a defensive line that doesn't have a shield, it's probably not the best line to go down, right? Uh, this, in my mind, is a is a primarily super offensive unit, and you should max that, right? You should put out as much damage as you can in the 15 seconds that you have and then get out, right? Um, extra survivability doesn't matter when you can't get out or if you, you're not putting out enough damage to completely execute what you're hitting, right? So you, you need to... You need to max this unit, right? And so I think personally that the top line is the way to go because that's what that is, right? So these are my thoughts on this. So let's let's take a look at some gameplay footage and I'm, I'm gonna hone in on a, a few examples because uh, we're already over 20 minutes of the tactics that I use and uh, we'll carry forth from there. So let's take a look at the first example. So this first example is just a, a quick one on how you can very quickly wreck heroes. So what's going to happen is I'm going to come up here and there's going to be three, maybe four hero kills. Now, a couple of them are already damaged, but you can see that when I go into uh, For Freedom and use Claymore Strike, uh, these guys start to fall pretty quick. Now there's Javelins there too, so they do help, but I'm basically sniping the kills, right? So in they go, I pop Claymore Strike and uh, For Freedom. I did it out of order, which was my bad, but I should have done it the other way. <clears throat> but you can see the kills come up of these players, right? Now I didn't I didn't bother to retreat uh, with the uh, when the for freedom uh, timed out because there was just no one else around right I was able to stand in front of my bots but that's basically just how quickly you can see them kill a hero right now the the next example that we're coming into right now is using uh, friendly units to protect yourself on another retreat right. So up here, they're going to charge into these pikes, and I'm going to go first. I'm going with them, actually. And I think everyone else follows me in. And I use my class of shields. Now, once we get through, you're going to see that the Paladin player is just allowing these guys to mosey on forward. But I'm going to, like, put my guys right in. That allows me to use their speed to get in and get the kills first. And then you're going to see me turn around and tell them to get out. I'm going to die here, but I've already realized that it's time to go. I click that. I died, but... I told them to get away. And you can see me retreating through these paladins. I've used their unit to cover my own, right? Now, this is a, an, another example where I'm just kind of hanging out inside my lines. I see this going on. It's a looks what looks like a reduced shield mill unit and a full uh, um, Conderati. So I charge. And that Conderati comes back. And he lines up. I just did for freedom, but I haven't done Claymore yet. Right? Now I do it. I'm in tight. So 
I wind up wrecking the the Condi unit. I don't know what happened to the rest of the Shield Maiden unit. I think I killed most of it too. But this is just to point out the sheer damage output you can do. Now this is uh, an is is an example of one of my matches where I was trying to keep trying to keep these guys as alive as long as possible. So it's a full run of me just using claymores, right? Now I didn't pop any cooldowns here because these are just the AI guys at the beginning. And you're going to see I'm going to be picking my fights a lot. I'm going to you know, I'm, I'm going to like stop a charge. I'm going to be moving around and looking. Always with the idea that I have to get back to my own lines. Right? So we come around this corner. And I don't like what I see in there, so I bypass it. And I come around the corner here. And I wind up taking on a, a couple of musket players. Now, I don't use Cry for Freedom. And I don't use uh, the Claymore Strike. Because... Uh, I am not in a place where I can get back to units easily, but that is a Shenji unit there, and I know I can kill him with a charge. So I, I go in, and I kill them, but I don't use any cooldowns. That's so I can get back. And I don't follow that other unit in either. I don't want to to, to use it. Now, I only went after this guy to, to, to bet make him back off so I can get back. right? But you can look. I got two of them like trying to, to, to pinball me. So I don't do that. So I come back around and I see these guys and I do do the charge because I know I can get out the other side. And then again I do Cry for Freedom and Claymore Strike out of order. This is one of my earlier matches, I think. Now this is funny. I, I back this guy into the wall and look at how anemic a longsword's damage is. Like, it's just, oh my god. There's like nothing there to it. If this, uh, this, um, um, dual blade comes in and actually helps me kill him. So, I back the guys off, because again, they're in that point where they're, they're gonna be, you see, they were just moving quickly there. They were gonna be in the walking slow. Now they're walking slow. Oh no, they're, they're fast again. Okay, so anyway, I pull them out. I don't want to use them again, because their for freedom is down. They're, they're damaged so I wait and you do a lot of this you're just you're just kind of waiting for all your cooldowns to come because really cry for freedom is the whole purpose of this unit so you may as well just wait till it comes up so I take the chance to pull a couple of heals and I'm waiting and you uh, you wind up doing a bit of this like you got to wait that minute for that cry of, or for that for freedom to come back another heal And he takes a shot at me from the right, or the left, sorry. Now, I don't want to go into that yet, but when the cavalry comes, I change my mind and I decide to go in. Because again, I'm through people. Now he's in cover me, so he is not braced when he takes this hit. So now I do it right. Cry for freedom, then fearless heart. Or sorry, cry for freedom, then claymore. Gives me my fearless heart. I kill one player, I kill the other player. And now I'm retreating out as fast as I can. I don't take this fight on the left because I know I'm screwed if I do. And I keep going. And I'm lucky because, again, the, the friendlies pulled in. And I'm trying to get through there. I get to the point where I can send them to the, the supply point. Now that I advanced ahead a little bit here. And so my guys are back. They're fully health. I charge in, but again I pull them. I pull them back, and I don't use the abilities yet. But again, I'm not going to take this fight. I don't want to take this fight, so I pull back, and I'm not taking it because I have no one to retreat to. I just take the time to to use my my mercy of heaven. Now, men at arms show up. That's a defensive line. So I decide I'm going to go when the actuators go by. There's the actuators. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go in. So I'm going to follow them. Wait for that one more heal, and then we go. Now, 
So I'm going to charge, but that happens. So I pull them out. So you have to be able to stop your charge and come back. If you can't get everybody in, don't do it. Right? And because I have nightly vows, they return quickly. And so you're waiting again. And this time I'm waiting for my charge to come back. So they went in, they beat me to it, so I decided to come out here. Bypass them. And I wind up running into this guy again. And then, uh-oh, Claymore. So I charge. Watch. I charge. That gives Fearless Heart immediately, right? And then I pop for freedom, and then Claymore Strike. I've got a heal going, and I win this fight. Now, I don't know if it's because it's maybe a new Claymore, enemy Claymore unit. Uh, I don't know if it's because uh, I'm also in there, or because the heals are keeping my guys alive just a little extra, or because he didn't have for freedom running, or Fearless Heart running as long as I did. But for whatever reason, he loses this fight. I have 92 kills, 93 kills, and I run him back to my lines. Now, I only have eight guys left, so I go back and I heal them, and then I look for an opportunity to throw them away. Um, I don't find that opportunity. I wind up just getting one guy picked off here and there. Uh, but this is basically, you're, you're, you're running around like, like foot cav, and you're constantly doing it. Now, what's this? This is when... Uh, you're going to not charge and you're going to delay your for freedom right so i am delaying my for freedom because i miss most of the charge and i have to bring them back and so uh oh iron reapers uh nope not going to charge that so i pull back and let everybody else get in first and then i charge you can see the right hand side miss or the left hand side misses so I, I knock him down a clash of shields to give myself time. I bring the unit back in. Then I go for freedom. Then I go claymore strike. Now I lost a few guys here, but that's, you know, you're up against a, a, an Iron Reapers unit. All right, but sometimes it pays. You have to delay that, that, that for freedom to use that claymore strike. Now here's another example. I'm using friendly units to protect my unit as I retreat. So I charge through. Nightly Vows, I hit, for freedom, Claymore Strike, I go ripping through them, I knock, knock them both down, and you're going to see me, I'm going to assist on one kill, I'm going to kill the other player, right? You're in the middle of my unit now, you've got no place to go, you're going to die. Killed Steel Rose, and I had to assist on the other one. And I could do this, I knew I could do this, because there was my friendly units right there, there was no one else around. It was, a, it was a, a, a clean kill, I guess you could say. And this is a lot of it like this. You're, you're, you're waiting for your, your for freedom to come back. And again, here we are. I'm coming up. And I'm charging through friendlies again. And I'm retreating to friendlies again. Right? So whereas I would used to use paladins and men-at-arms to flank a lot, instead, I'm now using these guys to charge through. Right? Charge through my own units and then retreat back. And I'm running the back. So that's basically it. You, you charge in, you run back, you charge in, you run back, you wait for your cooldown, you throw a heal down. And you can you can generally keep them like it's fun. I mean, you know, you can generally keep them alive the whole match. You can generally do some good work. Uh, because they're 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 uh they're they're that 15 seconds of pure I'm going to hurt you. But you do have to, to play them in and out. Uh, they're not an in it to win it unit. Uh, they're an in it to get crazy unit, and then and then everything dies, right? So you have to use them in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, so this is my uh, Claymore's video. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get something out of it. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.